We're opening up the wireform max scene file and uh, when you do so make sure you accept any unit changes if any pop up otherwise your uh, spline may not look exactly like this when you when you uh, load it in. Okay so uh, we've got a couple of objects in here, one is this base uh, primitive in here which is this top and bottom piece of the geometry, we've got another one here which is the line which is what we're going to be building up and we've got a, if I can just click on it uh, just a cylinder in here just to be the central core bit here which has got uh, the same material on as applied to this lot. Okay so um, basically what we're trying to do is to build up this um, distortion effect over here. Now if you notice it's not uniform i.e. Um, the entire distortion is not applied uniformly across uh, the entire shape of this coil for example. Uh, what you don't want to do is apply this distortion after you've actually wrapped this um, wire around the cylinder for example. Okay, so what we have is, I'll just go through the actual construction process, so we have a line primitive here, so a line um, shape anyway, let's just have a look at this. Okay, so we've got this really 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 long wire here, that goes all the way out across here. Now if you notice it's actually diagonal. Okay, so we've got the topmost vertex here at the top there. And then the other one, because what we want to do is we want to coil it around this object as it travels down. So we want the bottom vertex around here. Okay, so if we go all the way across over here, da -da 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 -da, there it is, it's right down at the bottom down here. It's like three units up there and we've got three there so it's going to come down to about here okay so if I just disable all of this lot let's just turn all these guys off and let's just bring that back you'll see that once it's twisted around um, the base is going to be down here okay so the thing is we need to introduce some additional detail in there so uh, what we really want to do is just apply some additional detail and then distort the spline so like it's it's bent and contorted like any kind of stiff wire would be. Um, so to introduce more vertex points for example which is what we're going to be using to actually add this additional detail in we can either hand add in some additional let's drop in an edit spline uh, just so it's not destructive. We can go through and we can refine, 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 refine and then manually uh, say push these guys around for example that kind of thing or whatever. Um, however it's a lot easier and a lot more controllable and less destructive if we can do this, if we can get away with it parametrically. So therefore we can just bend that edit spline and we can add in additional detail using this normalized spline modifier. Now I've actually got this segment length set to 80. You can't actually see any additional splines, sorry, any additional vertices added within here because um, we're not actually viewing the sub-objects with this particular modifier so we can't actually physically see them. It's a bit of a downfall with this particular modifier. Um, what you can't do is you can't show the end result. It won't stay on <laughs> unfortunately. So to check it what we have to do is to go through and add in say for example an edit spline and then we can physically see there we go we've got all these additional uh, vertex points added in if we go back to the normalized spline we can go through and say for example maybe shorten the spline length down to say for example 20 and then go back up to here and we've got more in there and so on um, don't forget if you do do this and you do have this edit spline in here uh, if you make any kind of amendment say for example this guy if you shift that down there like that and then oh no I want to actually maybe 10 in there go back up here uh, the actual vertex that's actually uh, numbered to be moved is now re relocated okay so bear that in mind so I'm just going to push that all the way back up to 80 again just for this one particular example so going back in this edit spline you'll notice that it's actually gone and it's all the way across here okay so we don't need this so I'm just going to kill that for the minute. Alright, so any kind of distortion that we want to apply needs to be applied before we start wrapping it around. Like I say, otherwise uh, any deformation is going to be uniform over this um, 
bent or coiled um, wire. So as we've got enough vertex points in here now, the bend, which is simply just got a really high angle in there, just to kind of wrap it to this uh, cylinder that's in the centre. Um, if we apply any kind of noise, let's say for example the noise that we're actually going to use. So if I have that in there, and then let's apply it to that, you'll notice that the distortion is uniform across the entire deformation because it's been applied after this bend. However, if we apply it before the bend, it's going to be applying it just on the, the stretched out wire. So therefore, what we end up with is this, a more natural deformation. So each each part of the wire, as it's being wrapped round, is independently deformed. Okay, so it looks like a little bit more of a natural uh, coil, like someone's hand wound it, for example. Now you could go even further. You could really start pushing this around and get some really kind of nice deformations. Now you you do get some overlaps. Let's have a look here. Let's just pull that in here. So if you, you will get some overlaps in here. So for example, you might want to kind of add in some additional deformation in, in the X or the Y axes just to kind of try and break that up a little bit more than normal. However, be careful that you don't get too many kind of internal intersections like for example um, within this cylinder here. Uh, where are we? Let's grab hold of it. There we go. We don't obviously want the, the wires to be intersecting within this guy. Now if you've got a lot of coils, if you've got a lot of wires in there then you you can pretty much hide it and if you if it's see for example all the way back here for for example you, you won't really be able to see any kind of overlaps um, the good thing about this is the fact that it is procedural it is parametric so therefore any kind of deformation that you decide to make um, can be easily changed after the fact okay so if you do decide for example okay I want to manually grab hold of these verts here and manually tweak them so that let's say this guy here let's grab say maybe one or two of the guys over here we can pull these out or you know do whatever we want with them let's just turn off um, enabling viewports so we can go over here. There we go. So we can see some some of these guys are kind of close together. So we can just maybe pull that out, or maybe pull this guy out, or something like that, just to kind of give it a little bit more extra detail. And then maybe pull that down a touch, that kind of thing. Let's just turn that back on. Okay, so we've got this kind of wire that's hanging out now. Okay, so we can do all that because it is still spline based. We have not collapsed it, or we haven't added any edit mesh in there, or turned it to polygons or anything like that, which is what we're going to do finally. So we can actually turn the entire thing to um, polygons right at, right at the top of the stack. Now, this again, it's a non destructive modifier. You can you can just apply this or take it off. It's not collapsed or anything like that. As far as the render is concerned now, it's, it's classed as a polygon based model as opposed to a mesh or spline based model. Um, however, anything after this, you will not be able to add in an edit spline. See, it's not listed there anymore. We've got edit poly, edit patch, edit normals, and all the kind of mesh based uh, parametric deformers and uh, editors that you'd normally get. However, the spline based ones are not there anymore, like normalized splines kind of gone as well. So, so it's not there either. Okay, so that's one thing to bear in mind. So until you actually collapse, you can start pushing around the splines, you can push around the vertex, uh, the vertices within the spline as much as you like. So I'm just going to get rid of that guy. Okay, so the thing to bear in mind here, like I say, is think procedurally, think logically, um, Mesh detail dictates uh, the size or the scale of the object. Uh, say, for example, if you've got like a bolt or a screw in here, which will say that this wire is very, very small, and small wires normally dictate either a couple of strands within there, very limited sometimes with uh, twisted pairs. However, they, they tend to uh, bend and uh, distort and contort and that kind of thing. So if you really want to kind of push the boat out, what we can do, again, notice I click on the normalized spline and we can't see the end result. If I push this down to, say, for example, down to 10 and then bring this in here, we've we'd still got a relatively similar result. However, if I apply, um, 
let's put fractal in here we can start seeing some pretty heavy details some pretty heavy kind of distortions going on here now and the good thing here is that because if we have this um, where are you? Here we go. Uh, optimize uh, interpolation. Any areas which hasn't been uh, deformed or distorted, uh, it will kind of trim the polygons down. So we can say, for example, let's just drop this down to three. Uh, we're still going to get pretty much a similar result than what we do having six. However, if you really, really want to go overboard, you can always just turn on adaptive and then sit and wait. And then it should if we start distorting this even further get some pretty heavy there we go pretty heavy polygon refinement around these tight curves we can even let's just increase the amount of polys in here let's put that up to 16 okay so you can see in these tight displacement curves let's maybe take that down to 50 or something and start seeing some pretty heavy refinement going on in here okay maybe a little bit overboard but you get the general idea of it so let's draw that down to about 0 0.05 so we get some pretty kind of tight deformations and kinks within there okay so that's pretty much the end of the Q&A um, basically what I really wanted to show you was a how to get this kind of thing coiled around like for example a, a, a cylinder and also what you can do is apply it to let's just go to the front viewport there we go so you can see this this nice deformed Y even though that it's you know it's just, it is in essence kind of almost a straight object um, you are getting this fine detail in there which says to the eye that this is not a large object it's it's um, it's trying to be straight it's, it's it's more kind of natural it's more kind of organic uh, it's been hand positioned or hand crafted or uh, hand distorted so you do get these kind of imperfections in there and it's these little imperfections like I say which kind of dictate the scale of the object Okay, so hope you found this uh, Q&A uh, useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.